Is there anybody in this room that would like to make a difference? Can I hear you say, I? I. Everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to count. But the truth of the matter is that it's not everyone who wants to make a difference that ends up making a difference. And who can tell me the missing link? Is it uh, willpower? Willpower, yes. Yes. The right heart, yes. Passion, yes. Commitment, yes. Definition of what? Vision, yes. Desperation. Inspiration, yes. Purpose, yes. Hunger, yeah. Self motivation, yeah. Resilience, yes. Self discipline is what? Systems. Hunger. Anger. Anger, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Anger for your states and being can become a propeller, right? For action. Right? So I will never forget that day. Never in my life will I forget that day. I sat in my class three in government secondary school, Oweri. As I sat down in that classroom, what was in my subconscious mind, what was in my mind was being head boy. I wanted to be head boy. I was hungry to be head boy. The intensity of my desire to be head boy was so strong that I didn't know when I literally left my seat and came in front of the classroom and spoke to everyone that was in that room. I said, good afternoon, fellow students. May I announce to you this great afternoon that I'll be your senior prefect. Thank you very much. As I did that, what I heard in return shocked me. The room was quiet. As quiet as that room was, I could literally feel an erupt. The people erupted in laughing. And the laughing generated to, you know when laughter becomes mockery? And I began to ask myself, who sent me? Over Sabi? Have you ever shared your dream with someone and you get that feeling? You get that thing that, do you have malaria? That energy was something else. And I was begging for the ground to open that I would get in. But thank God for lockers. I ran back to my seat and I put my head on my locker. As I was just putting my leg on my locker in shame, my mind tapped into the future. I saw myself being decorated as senior prefect of government secondary school already in my mind. The intensity of what I saw in my mind in that decoration enabled me to rise in confidence, which means I had moved on, but they were still laughing. And right on that spot, I remember that day, I began to ask myself, now that I've seen the future, how do I get there? It was a process of asking myself, how do I get the, that a powerful insight about strategy 
hit me. The intensity of the strategy I was having at that moment as a class free student. How would I get there? Number one, I will polish my sanders that I could see my face with my sanders. Strategy number one. Number two, I will deliberately get to the junior class and I'll ask them, I hope no senior has come to molest you. They say, yes, senior. Number three, I will iron my school uniform in such that I can have the ghetto feeling. Number three. Number four, I will hang around teachers' quarters so they will send me on errand. Because in politics, visibility is key. Number five, I will study so much that I will make the top guys in school. Because in government secondary school, where you can't become a head boy until you have gotten up to four A's. And as I was Remember, it was still at a spot. All this was happening in my mind. Where? It was happening where? I'm going somewhere to bring certain secrets to you that I have not moved a spot. Everything I was thinking was on the spot. Then, when I got to a senior class, everything I said I was going to do in that strategy, in my mind, every single thing I did, which means there was intensity of execution. Every single thing. By the time I was in class five, I will never forget that day. The principal of the school came out with his profiles, documents, and with all the vice principals. Everybody walked in. It was the D-Day. Announcements of prefect was about to happen. Everybody seated. The hall was filled to the brim. And the principal began with the announcements. The name of the labor prefect is one tall boy came out. And up to today, I still don't know why they give labor prefer to tall people. The name of the food prefect is those who love food followed him and began to celebrate. <laughs> then everyone was quiet. The name of the senior prefect, the head boy, of this great institution, 60 years old institution, A's. It was quiet in the room. Master Linus Okori. And they carried me on their shoulders and began to celebrate. And I looked at their faces. The same guys who laughed at me. The same guys who laughed at me. And my first principle in life emerged. That my life does not depend on a third party. The first thing to write. That my life does not depend on what? My life does not depend on a third party. My life does not depend on government policies. My life does not depend on friends who don't like me or those who like me. My life does not depend on external factors. What that means is that any leader that wants to build something, that wants to become something, any leader that wants to change the surface of the earth, any leader that wants to create something amazing 
must operate in that realm that your life does not depend on what? A third party. When, if growth must happen, it will be my choice. If I must become, it will be my choice. If I become outstanding, it is my choice. What does that mean? What it literally means is that the world will disregard you until you prove your worth. Nobody will pay attention to you until you have become. That's why leaders don't react. The reason why leaders don't react to humans, to the environment, is because they need to understand this fact. Nobody, nobody will pay attention to you until result has arrived. The world will not listen to you. Eh? The world, the, the world is such a place where human beings will not pay attention to you. If you want, test wrong what I'm talking to you about. Unless you have become. Don't say it's only rich people they invite for the party. <laughs> you can complain from now till what? Till tomorrow. They will invite you until they feel that you have arrived or you have built something or you have done something. Nobody's going to somebody say, please, I want to be on the table. You think it's by act, uh, activism that I come to the table? You don't come to the table by activism. You come to the table with a high level of intensity. Intensity of setting things I will release this morning as the secrets. Huh? Do you want to know? Yes. Intensity of what? You come to the table with what? With high level of what? Intensity of what? Ask your neighbor, intensity of what? Oh, I want to break it down this morning. Who is ready? You guys are not ready. I'm going out. I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out, man. I am going out. You guys are ready. You are not ready to take it. My brother, the world does not come to you. The world only comes to you. Even if you are in Sokoto, if you are even from your village and you create something that the world needs, the world will come to you in your village for those who think that I want to travel to America. Say, in America, I will become. Becoming is not environmental. It's not on geography stakes. You can be in the middle of Washington, D.C. and you will be as irrelevant as anybody can imagine. You will be like the gentleman that visited me in Houston, Texas many years ago. And on social media, I thought this young man has arrived. I thought this young man positioned in such a way that I thought, whoa, when he said he was coming to see me, I thought, oh my God, I was going to be experiencing one institutional framework. I gave him audience. And that young man, when he walked in, first of all, I saw his shoes. His shoes was pointing to heaven. And I was wondering, ah, this is not the guy on social media. Because social media can also become my brother. It can be a plus, but it can also be deception. So if you build your life based on that, 
This guy came in. I received him in audience. And after my session with him, the guy first of all said, please sign, I should sign an autograph of my book. I signed it. Then he wanted to leave. He said, oh boy, my brother, my big brother. I said, when did I become big brother? He said, my big brother, can I have a hundred dollar? Can I have a hundred dollar? He said it is not a very, very interesting way. Can I have a hundred dollar? Eh? I said, really? I gave him $200 in shock. You know you can act in shock. So I gave, I gave him $200. And when I was done with him, he left. The next couple of days, I was in Nigeria. He had posted my photo. And you know what he said? The guy said, this is the gentleman President Jonathan sent to get him to be in his presidential campaign team. <laughs> Did you hear that? When he said that, when I saw that as a leader, no, I don't react. I don't react. It's unnecessary. So I said that I will not give it attention. There was intensity of silence for me. You know what's called intensity of silence? Who knows what it's called intensity of silence? Huh? The word will provoke you to react. But leaders will never. And at the end of the day, I don't think that young man, I can't find him anywhere again. I can't even find him on social media again. Huh? I said to you that you can promote yourself out of value. You don't understand what I said. Self-promotion can go out of what? To be posing that you are successful is literally setting yourself up and getting those who could have helped you out of the way. I was talking about intensity of what? No. Intensity of what? <laughs> you guys, you guys understand. Intensity of what? Something. Something. What is that thing? Intensity of something. So my brother, do you remember somewhere in the Bible when Jesus was preaching somewhere in a closed room, the crowd in that room was so much that a group of friends, they had their friend who was sick they carried their friend who was sick and when they came to that room, there was obstruction. There was obstacle. They could not go through a normal system because the crowd was something. There was an intensity of something. Intensity of what? Intensity of what? There was an intensity that became a spirit that dwelt on the friends of this guy. And these guys, out of intensity of what drove them, what did they do? They removed the roof of somebody's house and dropped their friends. Their friends from where? From top. Boom! Immediately that intensity was accomplished. What followed it was an outstanding result. The world will not listen to you. Say, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. My, my, my name is this. Could you give me a place to stand? Is that how the world operates? Nobody cares about you. 
until some cases you have to assert yourself on the system and that might require an intensity of vision intensity of what many years ago I took a letter I saw the man they called Dr. Mars Monroe. I heard about him. I was in the university. My first year in the university, I came in contact with this guy they call Dr. Mars Monroe. So when I saw Dr. Mars Monroe, what did I do? I wanted to meet him. I wanted to connect with him. I wanted Dr. Mars Monroe to recognize my existence. Because at that time, I was already born in with the power of leadership in me. And Dr. Mars Monroe was not in the same geographical location like me. Dr. Mars Monroe was where? In the Bahamas. So, I woke up one morning and I said, the world will never listen to you until you show yourself as willing to go through the intensity of the process. So I took a pen and paper. I began to write a letter to Dr. Mars Monroe. I wrote that letter and I corrected that, letters more, that letter more than 100 times. One letter. One letter, the intensity of drafting one letter took me weeks. You guys don't understand what I'm saying. Do you hear what I'm saying? I wanted, I situated myself presently as if I was standing before Dr. Mars Monroe. I designed the letter in such a way that like I was speaking to him one on one. When I wrote it, I, my bishop's wife, I said, can you look through this? I bugged her. Day after day, the same letter, we say, let's remove this and we removed it. Day after day, we returned to the same letter. One letter. We worked and worked and worked on one letter. Design and design one letter. By the time we're done with this letter, I put this letter in a mail to Dr. Miles Monroe. The letter has been cooked. You want to go and meet with somebody for the first time that you don't know. You have not even taken out time to read his profile. You have not taken out time to read any book that he has written. You are not taking out time to do a research on the man you want to meet for business. You are not taking out time to research him. And you appear before the man. Say, my name is this. I want to do business with you. Is that how the world works? Dr. Mars Monroe received my letter. Can I shock you? Dr. Mars Monroe replied me. He said... I quote him. Dr. Miles Monroe said it was a, an honor and privilege for him to serve on my board as a student. I have that letter up to today. Dr. Miles Monroe wrote back to me and said he was honored in fact, it was his what? His privilege to do what? To serve on a board of a student, student organization, student of a university. When Dr. Miles Monroe did that, <laughs> the next time I had the honor of meeting him was in Archbishop Bessie Daosa's house in Benin. And when I met him, I didn't still go to him and say, Sir, 
This is the letter you wrote me. No. I positioned myself. Where was he going to be staying? He was going to be staying in the guest house. And they put me, the way designed life, God designed life. They put me in a, a room that was close to what? His own room. So I woke up, I got to him. I just want your shirt to iron. I just want, what can I do? So I began, there was intensity of that process. And when I was ironing that shirt, I ironed it with intensity of focus. When I was done, he said, this is really very good. It was at the dining table that Mamai Daosa did the introduction. He said, myth with Linus Okoria. He's turning Abuja up with his vision. And Dr. Mars Moros looked at me and said, said, of course I know him. He said, of course what I'm doing in the Bahamas he is going to turn Nigeria upside down with it. Do you hear that? Yes. That's our formal meeting. And guess what? I had the honor and privilege of hosting Dr. Miles Monroe in Imo State, Oweire, my own town. <laughs> the entire government of the states, the entire government hosted him. 1,500 people in the room, and Dr. Miles Moro took my hand and he took it up and said to the people of Imo, said, this is your leader. And it was in that room that I got the most powerful definition of leadership that I, up to today, I have adopted as my own leadership. And that is leadership is the ability to inspire, motivate, drive a group of people towards a particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. What does it mean? In that definition is the most powerful movement that I have ever seen. The ability to influence, motivate, drive a group of people towards what? A particular word, direction, thy word, inspiration, not intimidation or what? Manipulation. Because the world thrives on manipulation, the world thrives on intimidation, but anybody who can build the capacity to influence, mark that word, to influence, it means that individual, before he comes to that point of influence, that individual has built intensity in what? In what? In what? In what? You guys, oh my God, bye-bye, I'm done. Intensity in what? Intensity in vision. Intensity in vision. When a man or a woman is driven by intensity of vision, that individual most of the time is termed crazy. That is termed what? Crazy. Because that individual operates in the realm of unreason. In the realm of what? Unreason. Herr Motte was a guy in Eastern Germany that was given the opportunity to privatize 700 government-owned businesses. He was given 32 staff to achieve that. And he was asked to privatize one or two companies per day. When Herr Motte succeeded in doing that, he was asked, how did he accomplish that? He simply said, there are no models. There are no models. What does it mean for there not to be any model 
for vision. What it means is that what drives Mr. A is not what drives Mr. B. In a world where we are promoting competition, what it means is that somebody has built a bank that has 36 branches. Another person is driven by just building one bank with one branch. Does that make sense? That is his vision. But the intensity of accomplishing that gives him the influence that is required. He does not need to build 36 banks. So what people have replaced vision with is ambition. You guys don't understand what I'm talking about. So people have replaced vision with what? So your friend builds a company and that company is in five states. Tomorrow, you want to build a restaurant business because your friend has what? Has built something. That becomes competitive and that is not equal to vision. You must understand the vision process. The vision process is so deep that when that intensity of vision happens to you, you will not rest because it will give you sleepless nights. Since I was 19, the bug of vision beat me. Up to today, I've not rested. I was talking to my brother and friend, Stephen Akintayo, that as I'm talking here right now, as soon as I go back to Nigeria, we're announcing the National Leadership Conference in Nigeria. <laughs> At the Transcorp hilton And I told him that the former president of Botswana has already accepted to come. While I'm here, and you know, while I'm here, and somebody will say, ah, I thought you just finished a program. I say, okay, if I just finish a program and I relax for one week, eh? Eh? I relax for one week the world moves up in a speed that you can imagine. The only way to establish yourself is when you understand the intensity of process, the intensity of vision. When vision, the bug of vision bites you, the only way I know that it has beaten you, you become unashamed. <laughs> you guys don't. You guys don't understand. Do you know what it means to be unashamed? Class one, year one in the university. I got into the university with a vision that has hit me so hard. What did I do? I carried my potomanto, potomanto coat. Coat plus what? Potomanto. I carried that potomanto every morning. Those who knew me in school. You see me walking everywhere. Once there's an open space, Classroom, no lecturer. I'm moving to that class. Hello, everyone. Your leadership coach is here. And I start digging out leadership principles and dishing them. As I'm dishing them out, I say, 5 a.m. in the morning, basketball court, meet me. I'm moving. That's how I go. I, do, I can't remember how many times I went even to classes. In the exam, I'm the first to finish because I'm hungry to go and talk to somebody out there. So when court boys, courtes, in school, when they see me passing, they are all shifting. They are all shifting. They say, no, I better more dodge this guy, more dodge this guy, more dodge this guy. You know why? Because if they stop, there's a leadership conference in three hours. <laughs> eh? That's the passion. The passion that, I mean, the intensity of process was for me was like crazy. My brother was like, somebody has put an injection inside me. Up to the fact that I know how many times I took the could be for dinner. Could be, you know, could be for dinner. And on the table is leadership. Leadership, hard stuff. And after the dinner, they say, take off. You, don't, you guys don't understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, which means that it so ate me up that I could sleep, eat. Sometimes I wake up from sleep. Truth life story. Wake up from sleep. And I'm waking. 
the woman at 2 o'clock in the middle of the night, I said, something has entered my head now. And, and, and you start planning at 2 o'clock. Craziness. And you tell me that you want to build a business and you're not crazy, something is wrong. It's a state of unreason. Do you know that nothing really happens until somebody with intensity of vision shows up in a space? Do you know everything stands still? Everything stands still. Progress cannot occur in a community, in a system, until men and women of what? Vision, courage. They turn up, they show up. They step up. They stand up. They move up. They show up. They come. They come to a system. And the system will first of all reject them. The system will reject them first. We don't know what this person is talking about. The system will throw them out. The system will not listen to them. After a while, the system will tolerate them. We tolerate the noise. After a while, the system will say, but please, oh, it looks like he's, he's making sense. It looks like he's making sense. That was what my uncle or my first cousin looked at me when I came with this vision idea of leadership. He said, I'll go hungry. So I will die of hunger. You know, he loves me. Out of love. Some of you, your family have loved you out of your vision. Loved me. First, but I was consumed in my vision. He thought I was crazy. He thought I needed guidance. He thought I needed somebody to. I told him, no, this is my vision. He said, what is leadership? What is that? And then he sees me on a television show with, with Patito's gang. I was the youngest person in that gang. And then he listened. He said, ah, but I'm making sense. So. But however, go and find a job. Go and find a job. The next thing I wrote a book, I sent a copy to him. He said that he read it all night, that I made sense, but I should go and get a job. And then a few years later, my mom no longer depends on him for finance. She, he was wondering what was going on. The next couple of days, he heard, oh, I, I've just bought seven plots of land in my village to, to build something. He doesn't know what. The next thing is like, I'm doing a small mansion in the village. The next thing, I was running for governor of my state. And the next thing, the next time he saw me, he said, Linus, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So loving you does not kill a vision. It stimulates you to accomplish a vision. If you have intensity of vision, nobody will talk you out of it. It's because it's ambition. That's why they can talk you out of it. Intensity. There's intensity of process. How many have I mentioned? Intensity of what? Intensity of what? Intensity of what? Now, intensity of process. How many of you understand there's something called the hen. The mother hen. Do you know the mother hen? What's the mother hen? What's the mother hen? Anybody? The mother hen. Interestingly, my mother had many of, many of them. And one day I returned from school and I discovered that my favorite mother hen was missing. My mom said to me that that mother hen is inside somewhere. It was incubating a process, which means she was sitting on an egg. So I went in into that process and the mother hen was ready to fight me. Protecting what? 
the mother hen would have to be there for 21 days. 20, how many days? 21 So he was ready to provide me to protect what? The hen. It will be there for 21 days. Nobody will distract the mother hen from protecting. What does that mean? What it means is that there is an intensity of process that if you don't go through that process, if you jump that process, what happens to you as a leader? You will drop. An idea just hits you. The ideation process has not been intensified. The next thing is you jump on radio. You jump on TV and you're already discussing what? The ideas. They ask you one or two questions on the bigger outcome and you stagger. The moment you stagger, your mouth starts doing, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, that dream is dead. So many people have lost out in this life because they jumped out quickly. Or you say they have stolen my idea. Nobody stole your idea. There's a cooking process for an idea. You want to build something, you want to do something, you want to create something. That idea is for you to take it and sit with that idea. Sit with it until, until that idea is mature. Well cooked. You have answered all the questions. You have played the devil's advocate. You have talked into the future. And when the idea shows up, you are talking in public, you already have answers for anticipated what? Questions. That's what is called intensity of what? Process. If you don't go through intensity of process, in everything you are doing, to, to register a business, what do you do? There's an intensity of what? Process. Everything in a relationship, there's an intensity of what? Process. Why jump the process? There's an intensity of process. You meet a big man for the first time. A big man for the first time. There's an intensity of process to build that relationship. Then the first day you are meeting him, you are telling him about all the problems your father has left for you. And the big man says, I have to run now. And he goes. That's how we lose people who are valuable to us because we don't respect the process. Yeah. Process is important. It's intensity of process for me. And finally, the intensity of what is really important right now for me is intensity of presence. Intensity of what? What do we know as intensity of presence as a leader? Every leader on the surface of the earth must understand that there's what we call intensity of presence. You walk into a room, you have not said a word, but all attention is what? It's on you. There's an intensity of process already that started from your mind. That you have already raised your worth, your self-belief in your mind. You have invested in this human as an institution. Which means that you know that it's important to invest in the business, but you also know that the owner of the business is an institution that has capacity to create and recreate. That has capacity to become a brand. That that brand must be perceived as confident. That brand must be perceived as somebody with content. That brand must be perceived as somebody with style. Does that make sense? You walk into a room, not say the word, and the whole attention is focused on you. If 
you are, some of you go to church and the cameramen are moving their cameras. Most of the time, if you take notes, they move the camera on certain fellows. If the fellow has some freshness of face and look has capacity in that presence of face, it might, it might be a poor man. Does that? <laughs> but he's perceived by the camera guy that this guy. So he has to put the camera on him to know that in this church, big people come here. Does that make sense? Perception. Perception. Nobody's going to come and ask you how much you have in your pocket. Because in the African situation, I've noticed that if a young man doesn't have money in his pocket, it changes the way he operates. No, I mean, himself, himself. He sabotages himself. You see him, look at the way he walks. He just walks like a chairman. Chairman, your boys are here. Who does that? Who does that? Who does that? Or do you know that you can walk into even when you want to greet with greatness and there's a way that you can handle, sir, sir, there's a way you can handle this, you know, and then, nice to meet you, sir. A little bow. Even if you are great. Shows respect. It doesn't, it's usually you should do like this now. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. What am I rephrasing? I'm rephrasing the way we sabotage our presence because we don't want to go through the intensity of presence. The intensity of presence means that a microphone has not even reached your mouth, but people have accorded you respect. Do you know why people crave for respect? Say, you have not greeted me. You have not greeted me. Do you know why? They crave for respect because they lack intensity of presence. When you have created something, built something, become something, the world gives you the attention that what? That you need. If Dangote walks into this room right now, right? Everybody wants to go and meet him, two of us. Will Dangote want to meet with you in this room? If he sits down there, there'll be some people right now. Ah, I need to go and talk to him now. You break protocol to talk to Dan Dangote. That's why I tell people, stop chasing people all over the place. Does that make sense? I learned this early in my life. I was with a diplomat many years ago. i never forget. And in my early days, I saw an important man I wanted to meet with. And when I saw, I was well-dressed, looking very good. And when I saw that man, I was with this diplomat. I said, sir, ah, let me go and meet with this guy. As I was just going, he dragged me back. He said, Linus, no. He said, look, because you've got something to offer this world, right, you must also learn how to carry yourself with that manner. You can't wear a suit and you're running after this person. He said, guess what? One day, people will run after you. So learn how to carry yourself like that. And never forget that man. He said, even when you are broke, I want you to maintain your what? And the man made up his mind. Every month, he sends me money. He said, this is for your vision. But this is one is for your personality, for you as an individual. So you need to up, keep your capacity going and your sense of honor. Do you know, as I'm talking to you today, that man, in a few days ago, as I turned 50, he sent in a message. And in the heart of his message was that since the day he met me in Boya, in Cameroon, as an ambassador of Nigeria to that place, he said he has watched the trajectory that even when I had nothing, 
that I had already projected by person that I have the whole world. And he said today, he's proud that that young man has become. Yeah. Final, final notes. As you build that process of presence, you must note that you must also know that the relationships that have come into your life, you must have respect of the intensity of maintaining those relationships as well. The relationships that have come to your life, you must have the intensity of forgiving mistakes of the people around your space. Leaders who do that, they don't lose relationships. And when people know that you have that passion to keep relationships, what would they do? They will take you more seriously. I have become more in life because of people that I have invested in their lives. And they have also done what? Invested back in me. So, intensity of give and take is a process of relationship. Anybody who understands this will go really far. So, I want specifically are you guys ready for me? Are you ready for me? Let me show you something on the screen. Can I have a So intensity of process has gotten me here. Intensity of vision has gotten me here. Intensity of relationships have gotten me here. By the way, the guy who is designing this university I want to share with you now, I met him six years ago in London. In fact, I met his wife first. I shared my vision of leadership development with the wife. The wife brought the husband. They are all architects, seven-star architects, and green and sustainable space. For seven years, we were discussing a university that we had no land for. You guys don't understand. How can we be discussing a leadership university? And these guys were, they took me so seriously that every day we will come, when I come to London, we sit down and say, this is what you should do. This is what we should do when the university, this is what the university should look like. It should look like this, it should look like that. For seven good years. So when the land finally came, the five hectares came, this gentleman and the man and the wife said, Hey, Linus, we've got an idea for you on what the university should look like. And so this is the first draft of what it's going to look like. Can somebody with a sharp eye read that?
Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Can anybody see anything? Can anybody see this? Remember this December 2027, this will be a reality. <laughs> what this is, is the first draft. It's just a draft. Right? It's going to cost us 60,000 pounds to get this design out. I mean, talking, I'm talking about is going to get the design out in the format of the model and the virtual and architectural um, virtual, virtual system where you can literally walk into all the rooms and the dimensions of this building to get this out. We have done 30,000 pounds already. In the next one week, we're going to, we're going to find 30,000 pounds so that in another one month exactly, the vision will be out and then we'll officially, we'll officially announce it to the world because all television stations in Nigeria will go live on it when we're done. And we're going to build this, not equity. We're going to build this, not bank loan. We're going to build this on the first African non-profit IPO you can ever imagine. $50 million will come through IPO. What does that mean? You make a contribution to the project, your name is in the Hall of Fame. Legacy. That's all. All those who are interested to end bad leadership in Africa, they have a stake in it. So that nobody puts money and tomorrow they come in and say, I want, I want my... So the question I want to ask here is there's intensity of collaboration because no one man can do what? Vision alone. So I'm, I want to ask this day, is there anybody in this room that would like to put money, put money in the design and all those who do that, they will be the first set of people that will experience the best choice of location where we're going to put their names in the Hall of Fame. Is there anybody in this room you want to put your resources in that design? Can I see your hand? Anybody in the room? Anybody? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody? Thank you. Anybody? Thank you very much. Anybody? Now, what I'm just going to quickly do is that for all those people who would like to put their money here, this afternoon during lunch, you will share a table with me where I will further interact with you in a way that I welcome you to the partnership that is ongoing. On this note, we look forward to a great time. What is it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the thing is about projects like this, right? Every seed is a seed. Does that make sense? 
Nobody puts you under any pressure. I only want those who have intensity of passion to make this happen. That's all. I'm not the only one that will make this happen. We will make it happen. Is that okay? Is that okay? So at the end of the day, the top guys, please, you meet with me during lunch. We can take it from there. Is that okay? Is there anybody ready to move forward in this program? Is there anybody who ready to move forward in this program? Yes. Is there anybody willing to move prog progress in this program? Oh, yeah. On that note, rise and ask your neighbor, say, do you know who I am? If you know who I am today, you will buy me lunch on Monday. Ha, ha, ha.